um, uh, Mr. Sergey, you know, uh, you just use the terminology saying that marginalizing, you know, some people are going to uh, marginalizing themselves, you know. Radicalism and bigotry are very important traits against peace in every part of the world. People are going to radicals, they become fundamentalists and they do this uh, with bigotry. Bigotry. So radicals have their own mindset set. They make additions to the religion and commit all commit all kind of terror, savagery in the name of religion, and they are a big threat to the whole uh, you know society. They are against love, compassion, forgiveness, as well as all B 2s arts, music, and technology. We have to eliminate this radicalism. We have to eliminate eliminate this bigotry. And how do you think? we can bring Jews, Muslims and Christians to be educated against this threat of radicalism and how they can embrace the fact that all faiths call believers to peace and harmony. Well, I, I think you're, you're already doing that with your TV program. Thank you. Which is important. Thank you. And secondly, we're talking about governments, we're talking about national security, ministers, diplomacy, but we also need to talk about civil society uh, because civil society plays bigger and bigger role and probably will uh, become even a major player. And uh, actually, uh, as an example, uh, uh, we have Harvard have a program for leaders, management for leaders of NGOs, which are also direct here at Harvard Kennedy School. And, uh, uh, Starting next year, we decided that we will offer this program in Turkey. Wonderful. And we'll do it in Istanbul. We just Wonderful. signed an agreement with Kadir Has University. Wonderful. Kadir Has University. And, yes. And uh, uh, starting next year, we will open, we will bring people from civil society, from Balkans, from Russia, from Uzbekistan, from United States, from Latin America, from Europe, to Turkey. And they will have an opportunity, first of all, learn more about this country, mm -hmm. and second, meet with, with their peers, people who work with uh, Turkish NGOs. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I'm very ashamed that I don't know too much about the Turkish civil society. So this is, would be a good opportunity to open it to the world, so the Turkish civil society could also have a voice. The Turkish civil society also can talk about important issues. Because you say refugee, who deals with refugee? Red Cross and a lot of other uh, humanitarian foundations. This is civil society, yes. which, who tries to help people, civil society. So I hope that the help of Turkey, uh, starting from next year, will open more dialogue, exactly what you said, to, to remove radicalism and Wonderful. misconceptions from the mind of people. We have a foundation, you know, it's called Science and Research Foundation. We would like to participate. We have a, we have a civil organization, civil society organization, which has been acting more than 25 years in, in, in Turkey. And we conducted many conferences, we conducted many different exhibitions around the Turkey. We would like to know, did you come to Turkey before? I, I go to Turkey several times a year. Even right now, you see, I'm drinking it from a mug from Gerson University. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and, the, and the coffee inside is uh, Mehmet Efendi, which ah, I buy at the really Spice good. Market in Istanbul. It's real Turkish Marshall. coffee. Marshall. <laughs> Marshall. Uh, really and, good. Uh, so I think it's an it's a, it's a extremely dynamic country. Thank and you. And I think it's a yes. country which is still uh, undiscovered by the rest of the world. This, uh, but I think it's a country which, which brings us to a better future, at least in this region. Yeah, come next 10 years, we will succeed maybe earlier that, you know, this country will be one of the best countries in the world. We promise, inshallah. Jerry, you have any comment on that? Um, well, the uh, part of your question was, uh, how can Jews, Muslims, and Christians be educated against the threat of radicalism? Um, and a lot of that is communication. And I agree that uh, there are a lot of NGOs that are working all over the world that, uh, that are working on this uh, same thing, on humanitarian um, solutions, <coughs> excuse me, humanitarian solutions, uh, which I think uh, um, part of that is to 
concentrate on the solutions rather than the problems so much. Uh, because we have a lot of governments that are actually, I think, uh, um, focusing on problems more than solutions. So I definitely agree that the, the civil side of this will be a big factor, uh, bigger, uh, more such, I think, than, uh, than the government organizations will be. Uh, because the government organizations, uh, right at the moment, the last few years, have really been focused on specific things uh, as far as keeping peace. Uh, the, the NGOs are the ones that are going around right now that are trying to get people together, they're opening up discussions, that are setting up um, conferences and meetings around the world. And uh, one thing that I think we have to do, and uh, I won't get real far into it, but it's um, finding, you know, helping people find common ground where they can work together. Uh, um, getting people to agree to go along and work with each other without romanticism and sentimentality uh, put them to uh, the meetings, which I, I know is very hard to do because a lot of people are, are very fervent about their countries or, or their ideologies or what they believe. But uh, in order for people to get to come together like that, people need to learn what romanticism consists of and understand it. Um, a lot of places around the world, uh, everywhere around the world, I think really, the uh, people are, are taught and raised in society um, that romantical thoughts and, sentiment and sentimental or sentimentalism are normal and they don't realize the kind of problems they can lead to. Uh, they, they lead to many, many disagreements and these are just on a personal level because uh, when it, it's kind of like uh, when a bee's nest, uh, they all swarm together. So if you have a lot of people that are romantically thinking uh, rather than logically thinking, it could be like a hysteria that spreads out, and, and I don't mean on such a major effect as a catastrophe, but it, but it affects everybody else. So to get people past that and to realize, to not think romantically and, sentiment and sentimentally about a lot of the problems we have, but rather realize that we are all here uh, on this earth to get along and, to, and we have to work together. So the thing it is, uh, when a person becomes obsessed with something that just the thought of defending the ide ideology or belief, regardless of anything that can be shown to the contrary, people get really combat, uh, combative, they get argumentative. Uh, there are even people that get homicidal uh, over romanticism and yes. sentimentality. Uh, especially uh, the, if you look at different factions, uh, um, and I'm not, even gonna, I'm not gonna mention terrorist organizations by name, but. But uh, I'm sure a lot of us can think of the terrorist organizations that do go by romanticism and sentimentality, and these cause serious problems. Uh, but uh, the, at the point where logic takes a backseat to rational thought, we have a serious problem there, and it causes violence. And once we can get people to get past uh, the, the spiritual or religious or the governmental or the personal differences, uh, and instead learn what we can from each other and work towards the solutions instead of these problems together, I believe we'll see more of the three faiths coming together, working together, and not only the three faiths, but also countries and states uh, coming together to, to work together. Once they get past the, the, the romantic notions of um, so-called, and I don't want to say boundaries, but um, the... When you draw a boundary, you draw a line in the sand. And you have people that get romantic about that. It's okay, this is mine. This is ours. Uh, and when people get stuck on that, and you have other people that are trying to work with them, I think what we have around the world in a lot of places is a mistrust. And that comes from a lack of communication. So what we're all doing, yes. I think, is very, very important. Because once we can establish communication, it doesn't have to be trust. Get communication. Then we can work on the trust. Mm -hmm. But look at the, the, the solutions to the problems rather than the, the problems themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, emotional uh, acting is one kind of uh, misunderstanding in the world, and the second is exactly the communication. I think Mr. Sergey with this organization is doing his best to achieve this.